Julia, what an incredible reign it has been for Queen Margareta. And as we can see, she's so loved. You've got the crowds who are cheering for her. They're waving their flags. Julia, they really, really love their queen. There was so much love for Queen Margareta Danica. And what's really struck me since I've been in Copenhagen is there's really just this uh, quiet respect for their monarch. You know, when you're in uh, Britain, you've seen posters of uh, Queen Elizabeth plastered uh, all around the place. There's a lot more kind of overt uh, support. You either love the royals or you hate them. Uh, it's a lot more polarising. But here in Denmark, they're not as overt uh, day to day about their love for the royals. But you ask anyone in the street, and they say a similar thing. They say, oh, Queen Margareta, uh, you know, she's fantastic. I, I often see her at soccer games out supporting uh, children in Denmark. And, you know, we've spoken about how she does her own grocery shopping, affectionately known as Daisy or the Ashtray Queen, given her love of uh, cigarettes. So she does really give off that air of uh, just being one of the people. She's a Dane. She's proud to be Danish. She's proud of her people. And she's given absolutely everything to this role. 52 years on the throne for Europe's longest serving monarch. She's incredibly loved uh, by the population here in Denmark. So it is a really exciting moment today. It's an historic moment uh, for Denmark, but it is a bittersweet moment because this is the moment uh, when people are farewelling their beloved Queen. No one was expecting her to announce her abdication when she gave that speech on New Year's Eve. It was the furthest thing from people's minds. I've been speaking with uh, members of the public here in Copenhagen, but also Danish journalists, and they've all said the same thing. They did not expect this. They did not foresee Queen Margareta abdicating at this stage. They thought that she'd be in the role up until her death. So it caught a lot of people by surprise. It has been a little bit of time now for people to try to get their heads around it, but it really hasn't been all that long. So this is that moment for people to come out and to farewell Queen Margareta and to thank her for the work that she's done as they also welcome in the new uh, King and Queen of Denmark. And we just saw on our screens there, Caroline, uh, that official succession taking place, Queen Margareta signing that document, handing the reins over to her son, Crown Prince Frederick, who now becomes a king of Denmark. I've got to say, he looked quite emotional there. Quite solemn, quite wasn't solemn it? Quite solemn yeah, as absolutely. his mother signed that document. Mm -hmm. And then she stood up. And she left she and he took that main position in the middle of the table and on his right side, of course, was his son, the 18-year-old Crown Prince Christian, who is now heir to the throne. Queen Margareta, as Julia said, she always said that she would be in this role. Mm. She always wanted to remain queen until the day that she died. But illness was what has held her back and she made that huge decision on January 14 to step down and, and hand the reins over to her son. Uh, I guess well, you gotta... it's very selfless, it, right? It does. Because when you think about the the amount of work that is involved in being a sovereign, the, the the service to your country, to your community, the patronages, the attending of events, supporting charities, all of those sorts of things, uh, the Danish royal family do. I mean, we know uh, the British royal family do that in in a very big way, but but equally in Denmark, um, perhaps she just got to the point where she didn't feel like she could serve in the way that she wanted to be able to serve her people. Yeah, it, it's very selfless, as you mm. said. Uh, but when you consider that Queen Elizabeth II went right up to the very end. Till, Two days till the before. Day, to the day that she died.